Welcome to Free Range Sailing. For those of you that are new here, our boat Marul is a Klansman 30. She's a fiberglass 30 foot masthead sloop built in New South Wales in 1969. We are currently giving her a long overdue refit in Tasmania, with plans to set sail soon for the Australian summer. To support our project and remain notified of all upcoming releases, thanks for subscribing to our channel and hitting the bell button. With our raised fiberglass pads glued and fed into the deck, it was time to install our chain plates ready for our new Dyneema rigging. You've seen us installing these chain plates and the reason why we've done it now before we paint the deck is that we've actually epoxied them in place and we wanted the epoxy to have we wanted to epoxy onto epoxy if you will we didn't want to have to grind back the paint and epoxy um, that means that if we ever want to remove these we're going to have to heat them up to 120 degrees probably with a heat gun right Troy and, Whatever. and lever them out um, because they're really snug in, they're epoxied in. And we also bolted them as well um, with the nuts on the underside. So this is another thermolite pad and that will be for the mast step. Okay, so that'll sit on there. Bit of a reinforcement of the deck. And once again, this is just a, just a battle to get rid of any pooling and standing water around any, any fitting. So this will get this up. I can feel just, there's one or two little high points and I'll I'll just knock those off, but that, that sits pretty well. There is a life valley in the city Hurrying to cut my teeth I can take what I need to get by It doesn't make it easy The other piece of my heart moves slow Somewhere in the great unknown when I return from the afterglow Will you carry me like I am whole again? Wait, hold on Put me together, take me back where I belong I want it all I had a feeling but the feeling is all gone Wait, hold on Put me together Take me back where I belong I want it all I had a feeling but the feeling is all gone could take you back to my youth and show you what I wish I knew my will is strong with a place to lean in the moment I hung best belief the other ring of my wrist is gold pairing with the light it pulled when I return from my spinning ball Take me back. 
back where I belong. I want it all. I had a feeling, but the feeling is all gone. All of the all of the things that we've epoxy to the deck, like the mast step, um, the bow piece, and these chain plates, we followed the same method: wet and drying the actual metal with epoxy. <laughs> So as we exposed new metal and got rid of any oxides, the epoxy was right there to stick to it. Then we let that set and then we roughed it up and we epoxied it down. That's a technique that we learnt from the Gujion brothers. Okay, they're the, uh, boat builders that are proponents of West System epoxy, but whatever. They, um, they're pretty well respected boat builders. So that's the technique they use and that's the technique we follow as well because it works really well. When we put this in, had a, a few misgivings just about that it was, um, you know, a couple of different metals. And I thought, oh, no problem. I'll just be able to um, periodically undo a, a grub screw here, take it off, um, and lubricate it. That was complete fantasy. <laughs> even with um, even with some anti seize on here, um, the, the amount of different metals in there just conspired, um, particularly in a small cockpit and wet as it is. It all conspired to make this pretty bad. So. Maybe this throttle lever might be all right in a more of a dry cockpit. It's certainly no good for a. Um, we're going head to weather a lot, is it, Pasky? Mm -hmm. Every now and then, you know, we like copped a bit of a wave over, and so sooner or later, some of that water got in here, and you can see it's she's all pretty cheesy. Very cheesy. So instead, we went for a um, we went for a throttle lever that didn't have the convenience of a gear and throttle in one. The two separate levers, but of all the levers that we looked at, it was the one that was most prob probably the most easily waterproofed, and also um, it was very few metals went into its construction, everything's fairly uniform, and it looks like it'd be very easy to maintain. So, we've gone with that. So, it's um, one, one lever is the gear, and one lever is, lever is the throttle. I'm sure there's some other ones out there that are about two grand that <laughs> 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 would do a good job, but. That one's just uh, not it. So anyway, let's patch this hole and then we'll make another hole. <laughs> yep. We got time on our side. We're in a state of hope. I need you on my fire. I want you to know that every time you're away, I long for you so much I can find my way. Everything here, at least to stay alive, and the time that we share makes it all worthwhile. Got this place on. Do you feel that we got something strong? And I saw you. everyone just a quick reminder that there's only two more days left for our t-shirt campaign we've got the original t-shirt and we've got the new elements design there's a link above my head now and there's a link in the description of the video if you haven't grabbed yours already all right back to the video I've always been quite busy editing or working on deck while Troy has been rebuilding our mast, but I did get a chance to film him drill and tap these holes for a stainless fitting that will guide our spare halyard line
With the fitting installed the following day, I asked Troy to give us a tour of our rebuilt mast. So starting at the top, a couple of changes that we've made. Um, these brackets, just custom made up out of aluminium and tidied up a little bit, drilled in. So this one is just to get our VHF aerial. So that's all new, um, all new RU58 cable. I soldered all that, um, that join in yesterday and we've attached it here. So we're gonna have like a 0.9 meter, 900 aerial. It's going to come off there. That's going to go down to our VHF area, and we're going to have a um, AIS unit on that. So that's a bit of a bit of an up, update in our safety. Here, made another bracket, and that's our Windex. So that's going to be further out in a little bit cleaner air um, and more visible from down below. And then this all contained all round white light. This black disc. That's just a little custom donut I made up out of HDPE. So that's secured with quarter inch countersunk screws into the top. And underneath is a groove just to, to let the electrical cable come out. The cable that's come up for the um, for the aerial, for the VHF aerial and for the tricolour light, I've just left a service loop here, okay, a loop of wire. So if I ever have to come up, you know, I'll be able to get about half a foot of play on wire. And I've, I've covered it all with this black um, corrugated plastic. That's mechanical protection for it, so we don't wear out the sheath. And also, I was a bit concerned because some of the um, some of the insulation on this light was was white. So um, usually, black plastic is the best for UV. Over here, we can see that there used to be a, a sheath block here for our spinnaker, for our cruising spinnaker, I should say. So that's just been replaced by um, Dyneema and a frictionless block. So no moving parts up at the top. So this should last a fair while. In preparation for all of this, um, if, you, if you look back at what we did on the mast, I've gone through with a bit of a countersinking bit and a file and I, I polished all of these areas here so there's, there's no friction on them. Um, likewise, in the, sheave, in the sheave boxes here, where our halyards come out, I, I took a special trouble to go through these with sandpaper files and everything and make sure that there's absolutely no rough edges in any of that. Any time that we've got some stainless steel um, going through the aluminium, we've isolated with dielectric paste, some TEF gel, and also these HDPE, high density polyethylene washers that um, we've made some up and we've also got some that are bought from the store. The same thing, this pin here, I, replaced everything there, polished everything so it's super super smooth and again it's isolated with HDPE. Any time that we've put any fastenings in here or these um, mono rivets, everything has been treated with a paste to try and cut down on bimetal metal corrosion. Um, again, this hole used to be like a, a cheek plate with the upper shroud coming from it, but we've replaced everything with these and they're a, like a T-ball fitting will go in there. That makes in the future, it'll be really easily. You take out a little stopper and you can turn the T-ball sideways, take them out and you know replace your rigging and stuff like that. So it's stronger, it's a better design and it makes uh, the future of this mast for maintenance, upkeep, re-rigging, all of that will be way easier. Which is a bit sad because it probably probably won't be us because this should be good for years and years and years. This is um, this is twin halyards for our foresail, okay, going to the furler. So we've got this one and this will be our primary and this will be the backup. And it's probably a good idea every now and then, talking to Pete the rigger, he was just saying if you can swap your head sail halyards, you know, like a couple of times every year, it just varies the pull on things and, and you know, stops, stops wear happening. But it's a good idea just to have a spare halyard as well. Because <laughs> if, you, if you actually lose your, um, lose your head sail halyard down there, a bit of trouble. So it's, it's pretty good just to have a, a quick one to get you back to port so you, can, so you can sort that out. If you have a look, all of our halyards they're the same colour, that's all right. In, in boats with a high turnover of crew, it's a pretty good idea to have things colour coordinated and different, but we can get away with it because it's us. And what that meant is that we could buy um, all of this rope in a 100 metre roll and save a few shackles. That's why they're all the same colour, except for our cruising spinnaker. Moving down the mast, this is the next thing. We came in, we put uh, provision for a, an inner stay. So that should make things safer in heavier weather. You know, we'll be able to have, um, we'll be able to like remove this if we want down the bottom and, and have it close to the mast if we want to have better tacking with our Genoa. But we can have this stay and now we've got a halyard. So we're going to have two head sails, which I'm really excited about. A steaming light for when we're going under power and 
a light for illuminating the deck. That's all just a sealed unit with um, high efficiency LEDs. In an attempt to get rid of as many moving parts as possible, instead of like, um, instead of blocks down here as well, with pulleys and sheaves and so on and moving parts. And to be honest, the last ones that we had were the, completely the wrong size anyway. I've just put these plates here where there was a big horrible hole. <laughs> Um, and we've just gone with these 10 mil slots chamfered at the bottoms and in the tops in the lead in and the ropes will just come straight out of there so what that means is when it comes down the mast they'll go through a turning block well actually a frictionless ring and then they'll go off to jammers or winches or whatever whatever have you but um, yeah this is a totally maintenance free solution and you know I took care to make sure that everything is super rounded off in that way so we're, we're not going to have any more sheaves those sorts, of, those sorts of crazy things that are going to rust, more fastenings, all of that. It's as simple as you can possibly get. Same old gooseneck attachment, but we're getting a new boom. Um, so we had to get this modified a little bit wider um, to go onto the new boom and beefed up a bit. So our friend Scott did that for us and he's done a nice job of welding and finishing that. Got a much heavier pin, so we're going to have to, we're going to, have to drill out the boom actually to, to make it fit. All of these, um, there's eight quarter inch uh, screws drilled and tapped into the, into the mast here. I've actually moved this up from down there. So we're just getting a little bit more headroom. We're losing about you know, 25 centimeters, 250 mil off the bottom of our mainsail. But that, that's not a big deal for us. It'll just give us a little bit more headroom in the, um, in the cockpit. But with this, uh, with this in particular, I wet sanded with epoxy, the stainless steel and the aluminium because both of those metals protect themselves, um, if you like, by making a type of oxide, a type of corrosion. So what I was able to do is just wet sand that with epoxy and it, as soon as I'd sanded off the old detective coat, if you like, the epoxy was able to get into the scratches um, and bond. So this is actually epoxied on there, held with screws, and then this white around here, I just got a white polysulfide that's got a high UV resistance and just put a coating over it just to give it a UV protection, otherwise the UV would damage the epoxy and crack it and cause it to discolour and, and fail. So that's, that's what we've done there. Same old, same old track that we're going to be using um, for the inboard end of our spinnaker pole, but where these screws have gone in, Ronson originally um, Put out these little isolators in red plastic we've gone for black plastic so they're they're more uv stable and that's that's something if you've got um if you've got a, a sailing boat and you you know those quarter inch countersunk screws are surrounded by a little red ring <laughs> just check them out because some of them might be deteriorating and failing uh, which gives the screws a little bit of you know they're, they're not snug down um, so we've replaced them with, with black plastic isolators which is a good thing to do. So now everything that's on this mast, there's no different fittings. Um, all riggers still use Imperial. We've got quarter inch and 316 UNC fasteners on the mast. And then on the deck, I'm just going to um, have metric 6mm, 8mm and 10mm. I think there'll be a few 14mm bolts, but everything should be pretty standardised. And what that'll mean is the spares kits of fasteners and taps that we need will be much, much, you know, like much simpler. Everything that we're going to be um, trying to use, I'll just give this a spin without dropping it off and cracking the paint. All of the fasteners that we're going to be using are these, if we want a nice um, finish head and we don't want a hex bolt, will be these button head socket, socket uh, cap screws. So we can put an Allen key in there and we'll always be able to get them undone. No Phillips and absolutely no slot head screws. <laughs> so all of our fasteners will be really, really standardized. These are a little bit more expensive, but on a boat, it's often important um, years later after they've been living in the ocean to be able to get things apart. And you want it to look nice in the meantime. So we're going for a real standardization. Sometimes I've been talking to people and they go, why don't, why don't they just standardize everything? And you just thought, well, when you're at this stage of like rebuilding your boat, you can standardize everything. So the rest of the world might be imperfect, but you can, <laughs> you've got that control over your little world. So there we go. That's, um, that's pretty much our mast and we're looking forward to sticking it back on the boat. By popular request, join us next week as we take you through the build of our brand new lightweight Dodger for Marul.
This is totally your last chance to grab a limited edition Free Range Sailing Elements t-shirt or hoodie. The campaign will close on the 4th of December. To visit our store, I've put a link on screen now and in the description of this video. Hey everyone, just a quick reminder that there's only... 